friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another frequently asked question. And if you're interested in more of these, I will be putting the playlist to all of my answers to some of the most frequently asked questions that I get in the description box down below. So you might want to check that out. Now this one is about, do I freeze my grains? Well, if you've been following me for some time, you'll know that I've always said no. However, <laughs> Uh, something recently happened that's uh, and some more things that I've learned I've decided I'm going to start freezing them here's the reason why I haven't up until now it's that usually my freezer space is very limited and we were actually just talking the other day about possibly getting a small chest freezer so when we get our big bags of grains because I buy them uh, no less than 25 pounds when it comes to grains and 50 if I can and you need a lot of freezer space to be able to put that bag in there and when you do that especially a bag that size you want to freeze it for several days so I just came across a bag this is so frustrating I've had this bag for years and I uh, had it in storage and opened it up uh, I don't know how long ago maybe a year ago and have been working through it and then all of a sudden out of the blue there's weevils in there just they there were none and all of a sudden there they are even though I've had that bag for several years I know this because it's a Honeyville bag of grains and I haven't bought from them in probably about four or five years so <laughs> it's at least that old so that's really frustrating now one thing to understand is they're not going to hurt you if you have weevils in your grains you can yes you can still cook them up it's not going to hurt you it's going to be a matter of squeamishness now i'm not as concerned about eating bugs as i am about their refuse that you know that they're leaving behind so what i did do just to stop the spread of them is i went ahead and took that bag of grains and thankfully we happen to have room in the freezer just so happened because we're getting close to that time where we're ready to make a trip into town so we can hit the costco and stock up a lot more milk that's one of the number one things i stock up on there is their organic milk so because it's getting close to that time we were able to make room to stick that bag in there just to keep them from getting worse cleaned out the bucket vacuumed the pantry to make sure i'm getting any of the weevils and stuff and and i checked my other grains in their buckets that i have and nothing else so far is infested and so that's important if you find them is you want to make sure you hurry up and clean this up now you don't have to freeze your grains when you get them that's just going to be if you're getting big bags that's going to be the quickest easiest way to do it but you're also going to need to get them after you leave them in there for several days i'd say up to a week to make sure it freezes all the way through uh, you're still going to want to air it out let it fully dry some people will spread it out on pans that's a lot of pans when you're talking a 50 pound bag of grains but i just say get it air out put it close to a heat source so it can dry out good before you pack it up for a long-term storage such as if you're going to put it in mylar bags with oxygen absorbers and inside buckets for long-term storage then yes you need to do that now for me when it's a bag of grains that i'm working through currently i don't worry about all that i just put the bag as is in its paper bag down into the bucket and i start working through it so here's what you have to understand about weevils and this is the important part is you might get a bag of grains fresh grains and they might look good you won't see anything but uh, one, all it takes is one weevil to lay its eggs in your grains in that bag of grains and if you don't kill off those eggs that thus the freezing process which is one of the many ways then those eggs will hatch they'll eat the grains they'll make more weevils so then you have a whole weevil infested bucket of grains and that's not going to be good and they're going to keep eating those grains and they're going to keep laying their eggs in the grains and here's the other thing you need to understand it's not just that the eggs are mixed in there with the grains they're actually inside the individual grains so let's say you have an individual grain of rice one of these little grains of rice is all it takes they lay the eggs inside the grains the weevils hatch inside the grain and eat their way out and that's how it works so you can't just examine your grains and go oh there's no weevils it's all good you won't know if there's eggs inside those grains at all so 
this is only the second time I've ever had a bag of my grains get infested in the many years I've been storing grains. And to me, it's just kind of bizarre that out of the blue this happened. Here are some other ways that you can do this. Now, if you take your grains, your beans or whatever it is, and you're immediately packaging it up in such a way, uh, really the freezing process isn't going to be as necessary because when you're depriving those things of oxygen, let's say you're vacuum sealing into jars, like I've got my homegrown beans right here, uh, depriving those eggs and those weevils and those bugs, whatever's in there, of oxygen is going to kill them anyway. So the freezing process isn't really necessary. Adding an oxygen absorber to something like this, if you're vacuum sealing it anyway, is not going to be necessary. If you can't vacuum seal it because you don't have any means of doing so, then yes, I recommend an oxygen absorber. However, I do recommend getting yourself a means to vacuum seal. Now remember, we are still making and selling those vacuum chambers. Well, Patrick is making them. I'm the one that does all the listing and, and most of the wrapping. We do have those vacuum chambers. They're on our Etsy store. The link is always down below in our description box. And now that we finally got our order that we've been waiting on for weeks and weeks of lids to come in, where we should be able to keep them stocked. So that's one method. You would still have to have something to go with that chamber, like either a brake bleeder pump or a food saver pump. That's why we offer two varieties of the chamber, one that works with the food saver, one that works with the brake bleeder. But anyway, I wasn't meaning for that to be a commercial, but I get questions about that a lot too. So, th so there's that method, or you can just, or if you have the food saver tops, there's those I recently heard. Now food saver has those back again for $25 for the set of two. So you shouldn't have to pay 50 to $70 for just one uh, food saver top. You should be able to go to the foodsaver.com and see if you can find their set there if you prefer to go that route. Normally what I do though is for the stuff, for the grains that I'm putting away for a long-term storage, and I'm not gonna be working through right away, yes, I use Mylar bags, the big, the big Mylar bags, and oxygen absorbers, seal that up, and then put on a tight-fitting lid. Now, even without the oxygen absorbers, you should be able to, as long as you know you can get a good seal on that bag, and you push out as much of the air as you can, and then seal that, that Mylar really well, and then put on a good gamma seal or any kind of lid on that bucket that's got a rubber ring on it that's gonna prevent oxygen, that alone should be enough to kill the weevils and the eggs. Again, weevils are rarely a problem for us, but it's still enough when you're talking about a 50 pound bag, dang, I mean, that's really frustrating. Thankfully for us, we have chickens. Now, yes, we can still eat those grains and it's not gonna hurt us, but, because I do make my own uh, chicken scratch with various different grains. So what I'm gonna do with that after it's frozen and I've let it air out, that's just gonna go with the grains that I'm gonna give to the chickens because the chickens won't care. In fact, they'll probably like it even better with them dead weevils in there. So that's what's gonna happen with that. Thankfully, we have a very good supply of grains on hand. However, if it came right down to it and that was all we had, Yes, I would grind it up for bread because again, that's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna make you ill, those weevils. Remember, they're eating the same thing you were gonna eat anyway. So you are what you eat and the weevils are basically made up of grains because that's all they eat. So yeah, they're not gonna hurt you. It just might add a little more protein to it. But uh, yeah, to me, it's just more the uh, waste product they leave behind just seems a little more nasty. But again, that's just made up of grains too. <laughs> Here I have some various different grains I brought out just to show you. I've got some white rice. I've got a wild rice blend. I've got our white corn. This is our own homegrown glass gem popcorn, which is really tiny. It's just, at least for us, it just it's just never very big, but it's beautiful. And then here are my wheat grains. This is mostly hard white wheat. That is my favorite. If it was to, with all the different grains I've tried, and I, I've liked them all. I haven't found any that I disliked. My favorite to use though is the hard white wheat because when I run it through my country living grain mill, it is the one that works through the fastest. And to me, it's personally the most versatile. Uh, when you're talking softer grains like spelt and soft white wheat, they take a longer time to grind. They grind easier because they're softer, but they 
it takes a longer time for them to work through your grain meal. So especially if you're grinding by hand, it can take an hour to grind a single cup of flour from a soft grain like spelt or soft wheat. But uh, a hard wheat like this goes through much quicker, so it might take 15 minutes to grind a cup. Yeah, that's still a long time. That's if you're grinding by hand. Now, we, all, we actually now, because thanks to Patrick built that motor, I'll go ahead and put a couple of links down to some other videos I did about grains, how I grind them in the Country Living Grain Mill, if you're curious about that. That's one of the big expenses. That and our All-American Canner, those were a couple of the things I was willing to pay more for because both of them are built like tanks. They're solid, they're not going anywhere. And the Country Living Grain Mill, I have the option of going using the motor that Patrick built for it, or if I have, and I can run it on solar power, or I can grind by hand, which is what I did for the first couple of years that we had the grain mill. Other methods you can use to kill bugs and, and to vacuum seal you, and to seal your jars if you're going to put it into jars is the oven canning method. Now I've never done that. I actually personally am not at all interested in that, but especially if you're buying your grains in smaller amounts and you don't mind putting it in jars like I did here with these beans, that might be the way to go for you. Um, again, for me, because of the great amount of grains, I have absolutely no interest in storing all my grains in jars. These aren't stored in jars. I just put them in these jars in small amounts. These are all in buckets. So I can just bring them in and show you rather than bringing in the big, huge buckets. So again, uh, yes, bay leaves help. I use bay leaves all the time. But that bucket, that bag that I just discovered with weevils in it had bay leaves in it because that was the first thing I always do is throw bay leaves in there they will help but if the weevils or eggs are somewhere inside just one single grain of rice or wheat or whatever it is that's all it's going to take and those bay leaves aren't going to keep them from hatching out and infesting that whole bucket now it might prevent others from coming in to that bucket because they don't like the smell but once they're in there they're in there so the bay leaves alone aren't going to do it as, as far as if you've already got some in there. So you got the freezing method, you got the oven canning method, you've got vacuum sealing. And again, I think as long as you're, uh, however you're packing them away to take out all the oxygen and, and prevent any more oxygen from getting in, that should be good enough and you shouldn't have to freeze it. But this bag, the reason I'm freezing it is because I'm not planning on vacuum sealing it or putting it in mylar. I'm just trying to prevent uh, the spread from getting worse. So I'm killing those now. I'm going to leave that in there for a good week and then let it air out and then turn it into chicken feed. So do I freeze my grains? No, I haven't been, but now for such a purpose, if I'm going to not put it in mylar and then seal it up for long term, yes, I'll be freezing my grains from now on to make sure that I'm killing any weevils and weevil eggs that may already be present inside the grains. Now I have a lot more videos about grains, what I store, if you're interested in all the different grains that I do store and other ways I store them, uh, I'll go ahead and link to a few of those down below. And I also have a lot of videos out on vacuum sealing one, you know, some on how to use the a brake bleeder pump with the food saver tops and then some on how to use the chamber and how you can use that with either the food saver or the brake bleeder pump for vacuum sealing your goods and I'm sure that there's some other channels out there that already have videos out on how to oven can. I know I seen one many years ago and I was looking into that and decided that wasn't for me because I don't want to use my all my jars up for that. I have other uses for my jars but that again that might be for you so if you know of anyone any channel that has a video out on that go ahead and link to it down below so for those who are wanting to go that route you know hopefully we can get some good uh, video links down for that and you can look into that uh, method but for me my favorite way for most things is to vacuum seal into jars and for grains is to you that is where i stick to using for long term, the mylar and the oxygen absorbers, and for short term, just putting it in a good bucket. But again, as I said, from now on, I'll be freezing those ones before I put them in the bucket. Okay, well, I hope you found this video helpful and answered that question for you. Don't forget to check out my playlist of other frequently asked questions. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.